How's it going guys? So when it comes to the selection of your lights in Blender, it can be really important, especially if you're going for photorealism or getting something that looks like something we can recognize. And that's what the default Blender lights are made for. And today I wanna to talk about those. And I think it's really important before you start using them and playing with them and just doing whatever, is to really understand what they were made for and what does Blender define them as. So that's what we're gonna talk about today and I'm really excited to talk about this. Even I learned some stuff after researching this, so it's pretty cool. All right, now first is the point light. Now, Blender defines the point light as an omnidirectional point light that is da 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 da. We're not gonna, we don't need to read the official description. If you can, you can pause it and read it, but let me give you my description. Simply, it's a light that emits from a kind of invisible spherical object and admits the light at all directions. And how that light hits your object really depends on the strength of it and how far away it is from the object. And that's gonna depict your shadows. Now there's three important things on this light that you're gonna wanna touch every single time. Obviously the color, the power, and the radius. Now the radius is basically gonna make your point light much bigger and you can see even in reflections, you can see that kind of spherical object that you really can't see in the viewport. You can see that getting bigger and that's gonna make your shadows softer, also just everything bigger. So if you're using it in volumes, it's gonna take up more space in your volume as that emissive orb. Now let's talk about the power of the light. Now the power of the point light in all of the lights is measured in watts. Higher values increase the intensity of the light, negative values can be set, but you should probably avoid negative values if you're going for realism. Now this watt thing gets confusing. And again, the watts applies to all of the Blender default lights. This is how light is measured within. So what I wanna do is kind of define it from the Blender manual so you know exactly what's going on. Again, if you're going for photorealism, this is probably very important for you to understand. Now the power of lights is specified in watts per square meter. The power of point lights, spotlights, and area lights is specified in watts, but this is not the electrical watts that consume light bulbs are rated at. This is radiant flux or radiant power, which is also measured in watts. This is the energy radiated from the light in the form of visible light. If you set the power to real world values, you'll have to convert the wattage of consumer bulbs or LED lights to radiant flux. But this is not a straightforward process. The wattage of bulbs means the electrical power required to power them. LED lights have a watt equivalent, which is neither the electrical power they require nor the amount of light they put out. Some consumer lights specify lumens or luminous flux, which is radiant flux weighted with the wavelengths perceived by the human eye. Now, if you're like me, none of that made sense and that's okay because Blender knows that to do those conversions, it either takes someone who's really good at math understanding light bulbs and all that. So in the Blender manual, they actually provided real world conversions. So I'm gonna put them up here and you can check them out. I highly suggest you screenshot them, kind of pull them from this video or the Blender manual if you were going for something realistic. Now we just talked about the point light, but this applies to the area light, the spotlight and the point light with this watt conversion stuff. And you can see it's specified in this graph. So go ahead and refer to this if you're ever trying to go for exactly real world stuff. If you're like me and you're making motion graphics or just simple scenes, you're just doing things visual and that's fine. That's not really gonna mess you up or make it worse. Um, but those of you who really like to get in the nitty gritty, you're definitely gonna wanna use this. The next one is my new favorite because of all the control that it gives you and that's gonna be the spotlight. And it's, it, it kinda goes out like a cone. So this one's really useful, say you're animating a car and there's lights on, you need a light. So it's gonna go out like a cone shape. So the point light is great for things like candles and things that just radiate out in all directions. This one is a cone and there's a lot of different types of lights that use a cone shape, like a flashlight or a car light, different things like that, where you're gonna wanna have something specifically having that shape. Now the power, of course, is an intensity in watts. It just makes it brighter. Of course, avoid those negative values. They're not really gonna do anything. Now the radius is pretty cool. The larger number in your radius is gonna make everything softer. That's gonna make the edge of the area light softer and your shadows being softer, but don't confuse it with the blend, which is near the bottom of the settings. If you make your blend greater than zero, that's only gonna make the edge of the area light soft, but your shadow you can notice is still going to be hard. So you do get that control. I'm not sure why you would want a soft kind of edge of the light and hard shadows, but again, everyone has their own unique situations. So this one gives you a lot of power just in those two settings alone. Now you're gonna see a cast shadows clicker. That's gonna allow you to actually have shadows or no shadows. Again, having more control is really great and multiple importance. You're gonna notice this multiple importance clicker on a couple other lights and that's gonna reduce the noise for your area lights and reduce noise for glossy materials. 
And lastly, your spot size, that's gonna change just how big that light is going to get. So again, I mentioned it's my favorite. Um, I used to use area lights constantly for soft studio lighting. I've really shifted mostly to using spotlights because of the control they offer, but area lights are still useful and we're gonna talk about those next. So for area lights, I really like how the Blender manual defines them and it really sets up what you what they really intended them to replicate or look like. The area light simulates light originating from a surface or surface-like emitter. For example, a TV screen, office neon lights, a window, or a cloudy sky are just a few types of area lights. The area light produces shadows with soft borders by sampling a light along a grid the size of which is defined by the user. This is a direct contrast to the point-like artifact lights, which produce sharp borders. So I really like this one, especially if I'm trying to get something quickly done. You know, the, the, the spotlight requires a little bit of initial setup. This one is just run and gun, it's done, which is why I've always really liked it for the longest time. And what's cool about it is you can specify your shapes. This is really important if you're gonna see a little bit of reflections. Um, you wanna have to maybe a circle or a square, you know, above maybe a car render, something like that. Or if you're doing a window or, you know, maybe it's coming out of a lamp, different things like that, where the shape is gonna mess with your design, you can change the shape. And these shapes are provided to you because depending on what you're trying to replicate in your scene, that shape will enhance the believability of your scene. So if you're doing maybe a neon light in an office, you're gonna to want to do that kind of spherical. Of course, it's of a window, you're gonna to wanna to make that square and kind of change the shape to make that more believable with reflections, the way the light behaves, all of that is really important. So they give you that control within the area light. Now the sunlight is not used quite as much as it used to get used. I remember back in the day um, when I was learning Blender, I remember watching a Blender Guru tutorial and we needed to make, replicate a sky. So what we would do is we'd take one sunlight, we'd set it up and make it point this way and give it say like the strength of one, for example, and give it kind of a, a, the, the color of the sun. Then you have another light going the opposite direction that's half the brightness but blue so that you can replicate the blue sky with the light and, that's how we would do it. Now we have much more efficient and more realistic ways to recreate the sun, um, but this is kind of an older way to do it, but it still is important in case you ever need to use it, and it's still not useless. I've seen some people still use this light. Now the sunlight basically illuminates the entire scene infinitely. You know, with the area light, there's a circumference that it emits. The sunlight is just everything. So you can set up your brightness and then you can hit R to kind of rotate it, see where you want the sun to rotate. And then angle is the angular diameter of the sun seen from the earth. Um, in, in simple, the bigger the angle, the softer the light's gonna be. So if you want infinite light, but really soft shadows, bring that angle up and it's gonna soften it out. Now the last one technically isn't in the realm of like the default lights, but it's one that I want you to check out on your own because it's really powerful and it has a lot of really cool things with it, which is the sky texture within your world settings. If you go and set that up, it's very bright, um, but what it's going to do is make, basically help you create a custom HDRI um, in a sense, there's no clouds or other things like that, but you can change you know, the size of the sun, the rotation, you can animate it, you can change your different settings. And I encourage you to go check that out on your own because it's very, very fun to play with. And I've used it in quite a few tutorials. Um, so I really wanna kind of highlight that one. Um, and this video doesn't really talk about reflections. Now that's one of the biggest weaknesses of the default Blender light setups is if you see the lights and reflections, they're just kind of solid color. Um, this is when you would probably get into the weird wild world of mesh lights or HDRIs where you can really control what those lights look like in reflections. And that's where you're gonna get away from the default lights and more into super custom, super believable reflections with your lights. And that's not something I'm gonna cover today. If you do wanna see that in a future video, please let me know in the comments because I can totally do that. I've done it before. Um, it's a little bit more of a rigorous process. And I think I even saw Smeef uh, make a video about something like this recently. But with that being said, those are the lights. Um, I hope you learned some stuff. I learned some stuff when I was researching this. And of course, it's always just good to know what exactly these lights are made for, even if you've used them before. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.